Tona atrás. After the albina y el español nace tona atrás. From albino and Spaniard, a return backwards is born. Anonymous, circa 1785 to 1790. The unknown artist has rendered the father a painter, and so we see him at his work, painting a portrait of his wife, their dark child watching nearby, a servant grinding colors in the corner. The woman poses just beyond his canvas and cannot see her likeness, her less than mirror image coming to life beneath his hand. He has rendered her homely, so unlike the woman we see in this scene, dressed in late century fashion, a chiquador, mark of beauty in the shape of a crescent moon affixed to her temple. If I say his painting is unfinished, that he has yet to make her beautiful, to match the elegant sweep of her hair, the graceful tilt of her head, has yet to adorn her dress with lace and trim, it is only one way to see it. You might see instead that the artist, perhaps to show his own skill, has made the father a dilettante, incapable of capturing his wife's beauty or that he cannot see it, his mind's eye reducing her to what he's made as if to reveal the illusion imminent in her flesh. If you consider the century's mythology of the body, that a dark spot marked the genitals of anyone with African blood, you might see how the black moon on her white face recalls it, the rosetta she passes to her child mocking him, Torna Atras. If I tell you such terms were born in the Enlightenment's hallowed rooms, that the wages of empire is myopia, you might see the father's vision as desire embodied in paint. This rendering of his wife born of need to see himself as architect of truth, benevolent patriarch, father of uplift, ordering his domain. And you might see why, to understand my father, I look again and again at this painting. How it is that a man could love and so diminish what he loves.